All right, folks, welcome back to Flatirons Tuning. We're here at the shop. Uh, we've got this Outback in the garage, and yeah, stay tuned. There's going to be there's going to be more. There's an interesting story here about that. But the Pike Speed car is back from having tested uh, at High Plains, which you've if you've been following us, you've seen the results there. So the big things that we took away is we had issues. Uh, potentially with the oil temperature and oil pressure. And you guys have asked, well, couldn't you just tweak the, the dry sump system to, to fix that issue? And the answer, the, the long answer is yes, we could do that. But this is one of those cases where having data is something where we have to go a little bit deeper because we've been to high plains before with this car on a much hotter day and we did not have anywhere near the temperature and pressure issues that we had with the oiling system that we did this past weekend. Just said self destruction imminent. <laughs> oh, oh no. <laughs> if we go back to the oil pressure table, it tells us where we were and what our operating minimum mode is. So it's at 60. We could keep dropping these values so that it stays happy, but is an engine really happy at 58 psi of oil pressure? I don't think so. I, I think for, for right now, <laughs> the, the reason for the cut is oil pressure again. Yeah. Pressure. Yeah. Pressure. So what that tells us is that, you know, yes, it could be something to do with the dry sump configuration, but it could also be something else going on. So we're going to dive deeper into that. Now, one of the biggest things is that we, that we realized when we got back and started thinking about it was, well, yes, we, we put on the sequential, but there was a big change with the oil cooler. And, and what that basically was is when we got the sequential first installed and we went out to drive the car, there was a little bit of excitement and we may have ripped off the, the fender liners. So, let's see, I'm gonna show you on this side here. So normally, and we've, we've now got them back on, the fender liners, they go up here, and they, and they keep basically every, everything in the wheel well contained. Well, those were, those were gone. We, we got the sequential in, we took it out for a test drive, they weren't properly secured, and well, they got ripped off. So when we went out to the track, we had no fender liners. Now the oil cooler over here, if you remember, it was just sitting right on the other side of this of this vent. And with no fender liners, what that meant is that there was no there was no motivation for the air to go through that cooler. So what we're kind of thinking is that the reason that we saw such high oil temps and pressures when we were testing this past time is because, well, there just was no there was no actual use of that cooler. Um, so what we've done is we we've, we've wanted to change them. One, we've definitely put our fender liners back on because you know we want to keep that air contained in the wheel well. But two, we've made some big changes to to the placement of the oil, our oil cooler, and now this brake inlet duct is is solely used now to grab air and send it through the oil cooler, which we've repositioned now here. And I'll show you show you what that looks like. So now this is a much more effective, much more ducted use of of that oil cooler, so that should really improve things there. The other thing is that it's a small footnote, is we were doing some testing with oil filters. And we, nothing nothing that we can you know talk about yet. Saw some interesting results, but what we kind of had forgotten about is that we had a different oil filter on the car than the one that we usually use, the Roger Clark filter. And so we're wondering if well maybe or we feel like likely that is could also be a part of the issue with the oil pressure that we were seeing. So we were not using the, the filter that we typically use with this car. So that's also been corrected. Now, the other thing is the front splitter. So the front splitter, uh, well, we, we blew it up uh, the last time we were in Pikes Peak, and so that needs to get fixed. And Viet and Alec and the guys have been hard at work at this thing over here. So we're about to get the front splitter back on. That should also help with airflow underneath the car, give us a little bit more control there. Um, and we're trying a new design with some, some diffusers, so we want to see if that actually does anything, if it works, if we see some benefits from it. Um, so we're actually getting really close to having the car together, which is good, because the first testing on the weekend, or uh, the first testing on the mountain is this weekend. So we're, we're literally out of time now, uh, or pretty much out of time. There's one other little tweak uh, that we're going to do. You guys at Boosted Scoops are going to install our brake bias adjuster. Um, that was the one other small detail that we realized at the track where we really want to have that, that brake bias control. So we're going to get that installed and then, yeah, pretty much it's 
get that put in and, and packed up and, and off for testing this weekend. So that's where we're at. Um, just want to give you guys that quick update. So, you know, yeah, after this, after this weekend and actually next weekend for testing, we'll come back, we'll let you know how it's going and uh, I'll, I'll just get ready for the Pikes Peak Hill climb here on uh, June 23rd. So it's not that long, not that far away at this point. So thanks very much for watching. Thanks for your support as always. Until next time, stay tuned to Flatter Institute.